kill David Young. Kill the entire X Division. Kill Chris Saban. Yes. Yes. It's almost time. He's coming. Shove it, man! Alright, shovers, get your bricks at the ready. You're certainly going to need them today. Today's video was a Patreon request by Bez Domney. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. And of course, if you know a wrestler who can do the J O B to the H A W K any night, any day. <coughs> Drop their name in the comment section, Jack! Okay, okay, Raka Khan. She's a freak, but was she raised in a barn? Today's video could be bad. This is a warning. To get a good grade on Ring of the Hawk, you have to have a number of assets. And she definitely had a big influence on 14-year-old Hawk. But it's time to look back on it as an adult and see if she's actually did anything worth watching. What I will say is that I've been doing this for a while now, and I've learned that it's never a good sign when somebody doesn't have a single one-on-one -on -one match in an entire run. It screams out that they need help and they're being protected. So if you're looking to complete a Raka Khan gauntlet of matches, be prepared for a lot of bodies. Raka Khan started in TNA in early 2008 and she was immediately paired up with Scott Steiner as his favourite freak. She's the lady in the background of the Scott Steiner math promo. I'm sure there's someone watching who didn't know who she was. Anyway. Match 1, 6 person mixed tag match. Scott Steiner, Make Believe Muscle, Petey Williams and Raka Khan versus Homicide, Hernandez and Salinas. Hopefully this is going to be better than the last Shelly Martinez match I had to watch. If only this was a Scott Steiner video, it would be an instant A. He's in a foul mood and the audio is constantly getting filtered out of all this swearing. But from Raka Khan's perspective, there's nothing to say. She eventually breaks up a pin as Peter Williams is about to lose. She gives Hernandez the snake eye, but Salinas jumps on her back. Raka Khan throws her off with ease and then she just disappears. Where did she go? I don't fucking know. Homicide wins with a bridging T-bone suplex on PT. It's an S because she did one throw. What do you want from me? Match 2, Lockdown 2008, reverse cage match. This isn't going well. Christy Hemi versus Salinas versus Jackie Moore versus Tracy Brooks versus The Beautiful People versus Raka Khan. She's billed as being from the Isle of Man. She isn't really, is she? A random little rock between England and Ireland. Also in this match is Roxy Laveau. So in this match, the first two women to climb into the cage will have a singles match. The bell rings and nobody's climbing. They all fight in a big pile. Everyone ignores Angelina Love after a bit and she cautiously climbs into the cage. Raka Khan tries to climb but she's stopped by Christy and Salinas. Roxy Laveau also gets into the cage so it's over. A complete waste of time, the entrances went on longer than the actual match. It's an ass. So far I'm yet to see anything in her other than her looks but you gotta have more than that on Ring of the Hawk to get a good grade. Match 3, Sacrifice 2008, Makeover Battle Royal. Loser gets their head shaved bold. The Beautiful People versus Raka Khan versus Salinas versus Christy Hemi. She has a receding hairline actually, so maybe she'll be happy to be shaved bold. Versus ODB versus Roxy Laveau versus Jackie Moore versus Tracy Brooks versus Gail Kim. Got it? Good. Salinas wants to hit a DDT from the top on Roxy, but Khan's in the way and she sort of crashes into her. It just looks a bit awkward, really. Khan is huge compared to the other people. She chokes Jackie in the corner with her boot. The cameramen are on full on pervert mode tonight. The women are starting to get eliminated. Something finally happens now. Hemi tries to dive on Khan, but she's caught and thrown out. Really thought she was going to screw that one up. ODB holds Khan still and Jackie hits her with a drop kick from the middle rope. And then Khan is thrown out by three women and it looked like her leg was a few inches away from a break. It comes down to Gail and Roxy and the second portion of the match is contested as a ladder match. Gail wins it with help from the beautiful people. Roxy is now shaved bold. Maybe they could glue some of that hair onto Christy Hemi. The crowd loudly chant Fire Russo. It's probably the loudest I've ever heard it on TNA telly. Back to our girl, she managed one elimination so it's a D, but it wasn't exactly impressive. Match 4, Gauntlet Match. Once again, there's like 10 people in this match, but to the surprise of absolutely nobody, Khan is one of the last women to join the group. She weakly kicks Roxy in the gut and follows it with a sort of axe kick to the back. Gail tries to take her out, but Khan also floors her with a big boot. Tracy tries her luck at taking her out, but Khan grabs her around the throat and shoves her into the corner. She seems like she's trying to do a choke slam from the top, but that would be too cool for this video. Tracy fights her off and gives her a face buster. Only one girl has even been eliminated at this point. Of course, that would be Salinas. It's always Salinas. Khan starts chest bumping with ODB, which of course is a battle Khan loses. Then Khan is sent out when she misses her big boot and ODB throws her out. Angelina Love is the last girl eliminated. It then comes down to a singles match and Velvet beats Gail Kim by roll-up. What the hell did I just watch? 
Well, Khan did eliminate anyone, but she was a little bit more involved this time. It's just a D though. Well, she must have been exhausted from those few moves that she did manage to do in the last match, because guess what? No match for the next two and a half months. Match 5, tag match. The beautiful people Angelina Love and Velvet Scar, Cute Kip, aka Billy Gunn versus one dirty bitch ODB and Raka Khan. What a random pairing. This match has the potential to really suck Sunny Siaki's ass. ODB gives her the tag, but Velvet doesn't want to face her. Khan grabs the beautiful people from behind by their haircuts. She has them both in the ring now and she licks her lips with happiness. Khan gives them a double clothesline. Billy Gunn starts squaring up to her and giving her the snake eye. Velvet then tries a sneak attack which doesn't work. Khan boots her in the gut and Velvet falls over before Khan can grab her and do anything else. Another kick from Khan and ODB is back in now. There really isn't much else to say for the next few minutes, it's just ODB fighting the beautiful people on her own. Khan does eventually get the tag one more time and she hits some clotheslines and a pretty nice spin kick to Velvet and a bad looking knee to the face of Angelina. Khan grabs Velvet from behind and she brings her big leg down on top of her. That's the three. She starts squaring off with Billy Gunn again but she's jumped from behind. The save is then made by Rhino. What a random collection of people we have here. The best match so far, she actually got spotlighted. She still looks sort of awkward in the ring but at least her offense is varied. I'm going to be nice here and give her a C because this match made me want to see more. Match 6, Bound for Glory 2008, Special Referee, 6 Person, Mixed Tag Team, Bimbo Brawl. Fuck my way. Tracy Brooks is the Special Referee. Team 1 is the Beautiful People and Cute Kip versus the Random People, Raka Khan, ODB and Rhino. So you might be wondering what a Bimbo Brawl is and why Rhino is in a Bimbo Brawl. And you might be right to ask that, but I can't really answer those questions. I'm not sure why Raka's in this match either because she barely seems interested in anything that's happening. Rhino's beating up Velvet Sky and Khan tags herself in eventually. Billy Gunn also tags himself in. They give each other the snake eye for a bit and then they take turns choking each other. Billy Gunn seems to be winning the choking so Raka Khan puts on a nut claw. Billy Gunn bunny hops over to make the tag. Angelina is able to dodge her spin kick but Khan powers into ADB's path, there's no need to laugh. In a bowling shoe ugly match, Rhino wins with the gore. I have no idea what Raka Khan even did in this match apart from a nut claw, it's an S. Match 7, tag match, Awesome Kong and Raisha Saeed versus the upset queen Taylor Wilde and Raka Khan. I have to say, she really does have the wow factor, I can certainly see what Kurt saw in her. Khan doesn't wrestle any of this match, she just leaves Taylor to it. Kong doesn't let Khan get the tag and the crowd are actually chanting Raka Khan. Maybe this is working. Khan finally does get the tag and she squares up to Kong as they give each other the snake eye. Suddenly Khan turns around and grabs Taylor Wilde by the throat and she hits a choke slam. She shoves Taylor into Kong who gives her an implant buster and that's the three. As soon as the crowd were starting to like her, they turned her heel. Maybe not the best idea they've ever had. Especially when she's going to be a heel in this Kong Trials faction and be overshadowed by the leader Awesome Kong. A D for star power, she's obviously putting a lot of effort in with her looks, but there isn't really much more to talk about. Match 8, Tag Match, Awesome Kong and Raka Khan with Raisha Saeed versus Roxy and Taylor Wilde. This match starts with a brawl on the ramp. After a while they come back to the ring. Khan hits Taylor with a scoop slam and a diving knee which gets her a two count. She follows it by choking Taylor in the corner of her boot. Khan stays on her with a suplex and then she tags out. Roxy eventually manages to get in this match and she climbs on Awesome Kong's back of a sleeper. Khan rushes the ring and she hits Roxy with an axe kick to the back. Taylor and Roxy retaliate with a double close on on Khan. Roxy Laveau then tries to send her out the ring but she barely makes it, she gets stuck on the ropes. Taylor then tries a baseball slide on her, Khan grabs her but literally nothing happens, not sure if they screwed up. Moments later Khan wins with the implant buster on Roxy. Just not good, isn't it? Well, we haven't heard much from Khan so far. She explains the reason she joined Kong's team as who wouldn't want to be on the side of a beast? Incredible stuff right there. Match 9, Tag Team Street Fight Match. Raka Khan and Raisha Saeed versus Christy Hemi and ODB. Khan is scared and she runs around the outside, but ODB takes her out off camera. Now ODB chops her on the boob and gets in the ring. In the ring, now ODB misses an elbow and Khan starts choking her. Now Khan chokes her with a boot in the corner. When she turns around, Hemi hits her with a spear. Raka Khan gets double teamed for a bit now and she's hit with a double shoulder block. Moments later, ODB hits a scoop slam and Hemi follows it with a flying fire crotch guillotine and believe it or not, that's the three. So I guess they've given up on trying to make her into a monster. She's now a joking ow, jobber. It's an ass. Match 10, eight women street fight. Some jobber bolt, Raisha Saeed, Awesome Kong and Raka Khan versus Christy Hemi, Roxy the Elf, Taylor Wilde and ODB. You honestly just want to skip this one. I wouldn't call it essential viewing. The sum total of her involvement in this match is giving Taylor Wilde an axe kick. Unfortunately, she's too interested in licking her own hand and doesn't follow it up. Moments later, Taylor Wilde rolls her up for the free. It's an S. 
Match 11, TNA Genesis 2009, six women tag. The winner of this match will get a title shot. It's ODB teaming with Roxy and Taylor Wilde to take on Raka Khan, some job of Bolt and Raisha Saeed. It's really strange seeing someone as tall as Khan book so weakly. She just can't seem to manage to do anything. Raka Khan does manage to get a rare two count in this match on Taylor as she's beaten up on the outside for a bit. She tags straight out though because she sucks. It almost feels like they're going out of their way to not involve her in this one. She stands around on the apron doing nothing. She decides to make her way in eventually. ODB wants to pick her up but Raka keeps fighting it. ODB then has to put her down and then tries to lift her up again leading to a bad looking sack of shit which is an insult to Scott Hall. The match breaks down and Roxy has two of them by the haircuts but Raka Khan falls over on the outside. Luckily she gets back up just in time to catch Taylor as she dives to the outside. ODB wins this one with a roll up. The worst match so far and that's not easy. This match was pathetic and needs to be hit with a brick. They all continue smashing into each other after the match. You'd think they want this one over as quickly as possible. The easiest deaths I've ever given. Ow! Match 12, six women street fight tag. The job to Raj would take on Roxy, Taylor Wilde and ODB. How the hell is Rucka Khan still having matches after that last one? Taylor hits with a crossbody but she can only get a two on Khan. She responds with an axe kick and a choke in the corner. She immediately leaves them. Later she's hit with a Roxy baseball slide to the outside. She ends up cheating and throttling ODB from the apron whilst the cameraman zooms in her ass. I generally don't crop my videos this way, the teenage cameraman would just purves. And as a young man, I was okay with this. Khan gets tagged in later and she tries to grab ODB and somehow completely misses. Roxy's now in and she takes Khan down for running shove, followed by a drop kick. Raka Khan looks for the choke slam now, which Roxy fights off and turns into a backslide. Some jobbers break up the pin. The match breaks down after a while and Khan is left in the ring with Roxy who hits with a voodoo drop for the free. I'm actually shocked we're 12 matches in and literally nothing is changing. Brick, head, dead. Slater can match 13, 4 on 1 handicap match. The job to Raj, who really don't seem very happy with Scott Steiner's introduction for them, and they face ODB. Raka Khan makes it into the ring a bit earlier this time, but she misses her kick. She does manage a little spinning back kick, doesn't look great. Seconds later she misses another kick and she's hung up on the top rope. ODB spanks her and knocks her to the floor. ODB does pretty well in this match despite it being a handicap match. She hits a middle rope dive to take out three of them at once. The numbers do finally catch up and Awesome Kong wins with an implant buster. Nothing to see here at all, oh, no! SNS. Match 14, Gauntlet Battle Royal for the number one contendership for the knockouts title. This one's a real stinker, so reach for your brick and smack yourself in the face. Raka Khan enters second to last in this match. She catches Taylor's jump and shuts her into the corner. She also hits a couple more kicks to the other women. ODB then enters and she spears Khan down straight away. Seconds later, ODB throws her out, making her the first woman eliminated from the match and the second last to enter. Perhaps even more confusing is that some jobber Bolt wins this match. Don't need to say it, do I? Let's be honest. Shove it! So the Kong Taraj have now split up because they're tired of being bossed around. I'm tired too. Tired of seeing it and it barely lasted a month. Some jobber Bolt is somehow the number one contender to the knockouts title. Match 15, tag match, some jobber Bolt and Raka Khan. They both randomly cut promos about how they're sick of Kong. Raka Khan suddenly starts rapping. I have no idea why and I forgot this ever happened. This Raka Khan rapping gimmick certainly didn't last long. She doesn't have a good ending to her bars anyway and throws the mic down in anger. Obviously you thought we've been sleeping. I'm sorry if we're a little bit misleading. Looks are often deceiving. I know you've been scheming, I know you've been sneaking, and I know you've been fiending looking for a way to defeat me. We ain't going down easy, best believe me. So Kong and Raisha, bring your ass out here right now! They take on Awesome Kong and Raisha Saeed. Of course Khan doesn't start this one, but we do get a new move from her in this one. The rapper hits a double axe from the middle rope to Saeed. She also manages leapfrog into a hip toss, it's punctuated with an ass drop. The pin doesn't count though. Saeed sends her into Kong who takes her a cheap shot and the match is now turned. They double boot choke her. Kong squashes her in the corner now with high impact. Raka tries a fight back against Raisha, awkwardly ducks her kick and hits a clothesline. The cheating and double teaming continues as Saeed is dropped on Khan. Kong picks her up and scoop slams her. Now they just randomly let her tag out despite isolating her for minutes. The match breaks down. Khan tries to get Saeed from behind but she can't seem to grab her. Maybe she was oiled up. Khan and Saeed crash into each other now. Whilst that's going on, some jobber bolt wins with a backslide. Wait, no, it's supposed to say backslide, sorry. Kong beats them both up after the match and she also bombs Bolt on top of Khan. This match demonstrates my point more than ever. She didn't necessarily do anything wrong, but she moves so awkwardly and when you're as tall as her, everything small stands out. Ow. It's an S. Match 16, final match, four corners tag match. The beautiful people with cute kit versus Awesome Kong and Raisha Saeed versus Raka Khan and some jobber Bolt. 
who now have dubstep music for some reason. Wait, why did they change the music on the final match? What's the point in that? And the final team are Roxy and Taylor, accompanied by Daphne. Something weird happens in this one. Khan tries to rush the ring, but she's dropped with a Roxy right hook, and Khan's selling of this looks a bit too real. I mean, think about everything we've seen in this video. Roxy smacked her teeth out, didn't she? Angelina Love wins with the lights out on Roxy, and Raka Khan was never seen again in TNA. What an ending to a TNA run, a fist to the face. I think that's a very appropriate way to end this video. But it's not really the end though, because there's some more interesting stuff I've got to tell you about. Both Raka Khan and Roxy were suspended for 60 days after this for working too stiff. Oh, no. So yeah, that punch definitely landed. She worked two more house shows for TNA in June, and she was released from TNA. I'm not surprised, in her last match against Daphne, a Northern Light suplex was botched and Khan landed on her head. What else happened to her? Well, she did wrestle for another company, but I'm not going to say too much about that for now because I'm planning on covering it soon. She also had a horrible relationship with Kurt Angle. It ended in court with Khan claiming Kurt beat her up. Angle would go on to win the case. It sounded really messy. In 2019, she ended up on a most wanted list for interfering with child custody. That's still an open case. She could face two years in prison for this. That's due to come to a head in the next few weeks, so we'll have to keep an eye on the wrestling news for that. Also this year, her husband beat her unconscious in front of her baby. She doesn't have much good to say about her time in TNA either. She directed much of her anger at Kurt Angle and Dixie Carter. She says she was a lot more athletic than we got to see in TNA because they deliberately kept cutting her good moves out of the show. Instead, they had her wrestle like Andre the Giant. She was apparently doing moonsaults in dark matches. Someone in the comments will have to know that one. She's a big fan of Awesome Kong though, despite owing her money for looking after her kid. That's it then, I've reached out to Raka Khan for comments, we'll have to see how it goes. I know it's really easy to follow a narrative, especially in the wrestling bubble, but her voice is a lot smaller than the big names she was involved with, so it could be interesting to hear her side. What we can do, however, is grade her wrestling ability and character, because that was clear to see. We've got off subject in this video, but to me she's a very interesting person with a lot of stories worth listening to. How much of them is true is unknown to me, but what isn't unknown is that these matches suck Sunny Siaki's ass. 14 year old me enjoyed this because she was hot. The Hawk has a similar mindset to Billy Gunn, and if you don't agree with that, you better run.